Good afternoon! For this first Illustrator video, I am going to create a very simple infographic. I have opened up a new file by going to File, New in Illustrator. So Illustrator was all, already open. File, New will get me the new document window. I can press Infographic on my keyboard and name my new document. Remember, naming your new document doesn't mean saving your new document. I am going to leave the number of artboards at one. I will only work on one file at a time in this lesson. Um, the width for my document is going to be, and I'm going to change this from pixels, two inches. It's going to be 26 by 15. It's a little bit big. Let's check it out. Let's see. Maybe I'll make this 14 by 8. So 8 by 14. I am going to set up a bleed to 0.125 and make sure that the lock is on so that all settings are the same. So I will have a 0.125 bleed all the way around my document, all the way around my artboard, which will show up beyond the artboard black line. I'm going to leave my color mode at CMYK. I'm going to be printing this document, so I want to be printing to the CMYK um, color space. And I'm going to just say OK, and now you can see I've got a new document. I'm going to Command minus to zoom out slightly and use the space bar to bring my document front and center in the middle of my interface. What I have done with my panels is I have opened up the panels that I would like to use for this video. I have gone into the window drop down menu and I've used the painting workspace to start with. So the painting workspace will close all of the windows um, if I reset painting or just simply click a new workspace that I've never worked with. It will close all of the panels and open them up in their default position. So what I've done is I've used painting to start with and I have opened up and repositioned all of the panels that I wanted to use to show you um, how to use them in this video. So I've got my layers panel, I've got my stroke panel, I've got transparency, I've got the swatches panel, and I've got the brushes panel. Now you can configure your panels in any way, shape, or form that you would like to. It's like having a bottle of brushes on one side your paper, your pencils, your erasers, you can have the panels um, cleaned up and locked to the edge of your screen or you can open them up by clicking and pulling them over by their tabs and you can reposition them you, anywhere you want to. So if you make a mess, you've got your panels all over the place, you can simply go back to Window Workspace and reset and that will reset to the default for Illustrator for painting or in this case, if I like this setup, which I kind of like this setup a little bit, I'm just gonna pull these down slightly here so I give myself a little bit more room, screen real estate for my project, fit them in nicely. And I can go to Window, Workspace, and Manage Workspace. Oh, sorry, New Workspace. This will be my workspace. So I'm going to name this my um, lesson, lessons workspace. So when I'm performing my lessons, I'm going to use this workspace so that the layers, panel strokes, transparency swatches, the ones that I want to reveal are going to be revealed for the lessons. So here we are, I've saved the lessons workspace. So no matter what I do, move my panels around, close up a panel, I can go back to window workspace and reset lessons. So now they've jumped back into place. Awesome. Thank you very much, Illustrator, for allowing me to do that. It's like doing a quick twinkle of my nose and cleaning up my desktop um, <laughs> in an automated way. Okay, so first things first. I have got my layers panel open. I can see that in my first project, the first file that I open, I have nothing on my layers, but I do have layer one available for me. If I go over to the toolbar and select a tool 
and I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on the rect rectangle tool and hold to reveal the nested tools underneath the rectangle and choose ellipse. I'd like to make a couple of ellipses to make a really simple infographic. If I click and I bring out my first ellipse and I press shift, it's going to constrain to a perfect circle. I release and I've got a perfect circle sitting on my desktop, on my file, in my artboard. I have on the toolbar the fill color set to white, the stroke color is set to black. If I use the swap fill and stroke, click, because that circle was still um, selected, it was active, the reverse or swap is going to work. If nothing was selected, I would simply be able to reverse those two colors for fill and stroke and nothing will happen on the screen. You need to have a selection selected in order for something to happen when you swap the fill and stroke. So selection, selection tool. The selection tool is the tool that you use to select objects with. The creation tools, which are in the section below the selection tools, those ones are the creation tools. So I've just created an ellipse and then I've gone in and selected it. Now, if you look closely at the toolbar, if you zoom in at the toolbar, and I don't have the capability to zoom you in um, on the video editing that I have here, but if you see, if you scoot your eyes and get your, get your um, eyes really close to the screen, you can see there's a very faint gray line between sections in the toolbar. The top area of the toolbar is the selection tools. Selection, direct selection, magic wand, and lasso. So we might as well go through what the selection tools do. Selection tool, I make a selection and the object that I have selected has been revealed in the layers panel to be selected. The direct selection tool works on the points, bezier handles, how those handles are driving or creating the curves and the shapes in my vector object. I'm just going to press Command Z to get back in time to before I manipulated those points. That direct selection tool works on the base objects, the very, very building blocks of the vector objects. The vector object that I have in front of me is an ellipse. It has four points, one, two, three, four, and because I drew it with one of the sh primitive shape builders, one of the creation tools, it is a perfect circle. It has only the amount of points necessary to create that circle. It has all of the math in place, so all of the handles that dictate how half of that curve is being drawn to the next point, and the handle that dictates how curvy that curve will be curving along the path, those points and the position of those points work like a outline dictating how that shape is going to be created. And of course the math can be changed and manipulated. And I'm pressing shift to make sure that that Bezier handle is staying straight and I can manipulate this object um, by those curves, by those points, by those handles to create the path necessary to hold whatever it is that I want to hold. In this case, it is a solid color. It is black. If I go to the view drop down menu and reveal or look at my file in outline mode, you can see more clearly where the points are on this object. I've got one two, three, four points. All that view does, or, or view in outline does, is show you your object without the fill color, without all of the extra noise, so you can see if your paths line up and see where your points and your handles are. I'll go back to preview, and I'll go back in time. One, two, three, four steps. So I've just pressed Command Z to get back in time. So you can see that I have an ellipse on the screen still. The ellipse is on layer one. 
I can change layer one's name by double clicking and I can call it circles. Okay. I'm going to click on that first circle, press option on my keyboard and press shift to constrain to that um, horizon line, bottom line, constrain those center points. It constrains by pulling with shift. It made a duplicate, pressing option creates a duplicate, pressing shift keeps those two objects constrained. You can see that my second object is revealing, because it's on top, it's revealing its outline. So when Illustrator is first opened, usually by default there's going to be a fill color and a stroke color applied to your object if you, if you start drawing right away. If you do not want that hairline stroke, it is a one point stroke around both of those ellipses, I can turn that stroke off. So you can see that I've clicked on the stroke and it's pulled up in front of the fill. I'm turning it off, I'm saying none. So now I have no hairline around the ellipse that's on top. You can also see in the layers panel, I've got two paths, one on top of each other, and they are on the circles layer. I can close that layer up. Okay, this is cool. This is a nice start. I'm going to center these two on my document page or my artboard. I'm going to center it by eye. And I'm going to now double click, or sorry, not double click, but um, shift select both of those so you can see in the layers panel under circles both of those circles are selected. Now one is selected I'm pressing shift and I'm selecting the second one so the layers panel corresponds with what you see on the artboard. I'm going to zoom right down to my transparency panel and I'm going to not leave my transparency at 100% but knock this down to around 50%. So I've got a 50% transparency on both of those ellipses, which means that when they, when or where they overlap, there's going to be um, a darkening. So there's going to be, it's not really a double 50% opacity, it doesn't look like pure black in here, um, but they are overlapping in that area. So you can see the beginning of a really simple infographic. If I wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> stick with the simplicity. Maybe that's it for the graphic, but there could be some information that I add in here. And if I wanted to add some text information, I could create a new layer and call it the text layer, a layer above both of those ellipses or the circles layer. If I simply click on the new layer or create new layer button, it creates a new layer, but it's called layer two. I'm going to go back in time, command Z, undo and move to the flyout menu and create a new layer this way. Creating a new layer from the flyout menu allows you to name the layer and decide whether you or not you would like the color that that layer um, selection area is going to be. So in this case it's red. I'm going to change, oops, turn that off, change the layer name to text and say okay and you can see red is what the layer recognition color is going to be. So if I select anything that has been drawn on layer text, it's going to be red, and I'll show you what that means. I'm going to click on the selection tool called Type Tool. I'm going to drag out a type area box, and I'm going to type in Art. Select it. Look at the control bar at the top of my screen. The control bar is directly under where it says Illustrator and AI. I have a character selected. I've got no stroke on the character, and the character that I'm using is Myriad Pro. I can change this to any font that I would like, or I can type in a typeface as long as it exists or is installed on my computer, and I can change the type size or the type style here. I can move my type area box anywhere on the screen and you can see red, the red bounding box, corresponds with the redness of that layer. If I want to change the 
red. If my type or my circles were red, I wouldn't be able to see the bounding box. So quite easily you can double click and change this to a custom color. As you can see I've changed it to a um, quite bright blue and its corresponding change is happening on the, on the selection box of art. So you can see that I'm starting out with a very simple um, infographic. I am going to pull out art. So I've just pulled out a copy. I'm going to go back and do it one more time. So my type area box is selected. My tool is the selection tool. Once I float over the art and I press option, you can see that there are two arrowheads that are revealed. If I pull at that point and press shift, that's giving me a duplicate of the original text box. So it's the same idea. Um, when I clicked on one of the ellipses, or in this case two ellipses, and you can see that the tail's gone from the arrow. You see when I'm not floating over the objects, the tail is revealed. The tail is gone. I press option, I can pull out a copy of both of those objects. Very interesting. It works with text as well. So I'm going to press shift and select both of those text boxes. Make sure that the arrow head, uh, tail is gone, the head is revealed. Press option and pull out a copy to create a duplicate of each of those text boxes and of course the ellipses. So now I've got this really interesting start to an infographic. One problem though, I do believe, ah, everything is as it should be. My circles ended up repeating or duplicating themselves on the circles layer. My art duplicates are on the text layer. Awesome. This is exactly how I would like to work if they did not. If for some reason one of or two of the text boxes ended up on the circles layer, easily enough I can pull the sub layer from layer to layer. Hopefully you can see that. This is a really good way of keeping your layers organized. Name your layers from the start of your project. Keep looking to see that your layers are in the right spot or your sub layers are in the right spot and you won't get confused. Usually with a project you have to deal with a background layer, an art or a content layer, a text layer, maybe another layer for some sort of texture. Usually four layers will do to start with and you'll just build up layers from there. It's a really good good um, workflow um, organizational tool to use this layers panel. In any case, that is the end of the first video, a very simple infographic.